So Ben, before I show you how to use your email in Office 365, let me show you how to navigate around the Office 365 interface. Uh, before you show me how to navigate, can you show me where to get there in the first place? Sure, so let's talk about how to get to Office 365. Great. So from any web browser, there's a couple different ways you can do it. The easiest way is to go to office.com and you get a screen like this. You can also go to office365.com which is a similar screen. Notice that on both of these screens you have a sign-in link in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. You can also go to office.microsoft.com and that takes you to pretty much the same page. I like to go to office.com because it's the shortest to type. And notice that since I've been on this computer before and I've logged in here before, it's welcoming me back. I was logged in before as George at biggerbrains.com. So when I go to sign in, so it's going to assume that I want to log back in as the account I was before, which makes sense. If it's your computer, you probably only log in as you. Right. If you've never logged in before, it's going to look like this, where it says, Welcome to Office, and then when you sign in, it's just going to want your email address or your phone number or your Skype ID. But let's go back here, and if for some reason I did not want to log in as one of these accounts I've logged in as before, I can always choose Use Another Account. Now, I want to show you something else, too. When I go to log in as me, I'm going to enter my email address. Notice it's giving me a choice because I actually have Microsoft accounts both through my work and also a personal account. So if you've ever set up a personal account for like uh, your Xbox at home or if you have an email address through Hotmail or Outlook.com, something like that, you may get this choice and then you choose which way you want to go in. Oh, okay. Now in this case we're using our business account so I'm going to choose that one and I'll enter my password. And now we're in. So this is the Office 365 home screen and I want to show you a few things about it. Now, the most important thing on the home screen is probably this top navigation bar, which has recently been updated, but that's so important. I want to give it its own time. We'll talk about that in the next lesson. Let's look at what else is down here on the home page, because there's a lot of good stuff here. It's basically broken into three sections. At the top, right underneath the good afternoon or good evening or good morning message, you'll see apps. Below that, we'll see documents. And below that, we'll see places. So starting back up here at the top, it's showing us the Office 365 apps. Now this is not all of the apps. It's showing us the most common apps and also the ones we've used most frequently. So Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, those will always be here. These last ones are here because they're ones that I've opened recently. We're actually in my account. If you want to see all of the apps, you can either click this All Apps button here, which is going to open kind of a full page view of all the apps oh, wow. in Office 365, including some nice little recommended tiles at the top. And we're going to talk about a lot of these apps during this course. We're not going to cover all of them, but we're going to cover the most commonly used ones. So if we go back up here to the top, I'm going to click this back arrow to go back to our home screen. By the way, I can also see all the apps if I click on my app launcher in the top left. Again, I see some of the common apps here, and there's an all apps button here. And that gets me the same sort of list, but in the apps menu instead. We'll cover that some more in the next module. I'm going to click away to close that. Now you'll also notice I have a Start New button. This is a place that if I want to start a brand new document, uh, Word document, Excel workbook, PowerPoint presentation, OneNote notebook, and you can see the list here, uh, I can start it directly from here. But it's an automatically shared document? No, it's not shared. This will be creating a document in your OneDrive for Business. So on your cloud drive, but not automatically shared. So if I create a new Word document, for example, this is a blank Word document. I can you know, type in whatever I want to. I can change the name. We'll call this the High Ben document. And so now this is a document that's shared in my OneDrive. We'll see it show up later. Uh, but it's not automatically shared with anybody unless I go to share it. Got it. We'll talk more about that later. All right. So let's close this for now because I want to keep talking about our home screen. Now, these are all the web based apps, but notice we also have this install button here that gives us two choices. Install Office 365 apps is going to give us the standard Outlook, OneDrive, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, all of those apps onto our local PC or our local Mac. Uh, if we're on a mobile device, it'll also give us a link to the App Store to download those from there. I also have these other install options. This is to download other apps that I may have a license to as part of my Office 365 subscription. So you see, for example, in my case, I have access to Visio and Skype for Business that aren't part of the normal install. And this is also helpful if you want a, a version of the apps in a different language. So if I wanted, for example, the French version of Visio for some reason, uh, I could do that and install that from here. So all of my app installs, I'm going to close this tab. 
Uh, all of my app installs, the web-based apps are here, the desktop or mobile apps I can get to from this button here. This top section is all about apps. If I scroll down a little bit, now we're getting into the document section. And it starts off with this recommended section. This is where the AI behind Microsoft is looking at all of the apps that I've accessed, all of the apps that have been sent to me or shared with me, also apps that other people on my team are working on. And these are four that it thinks that I might be interested in looking at right at this moment. So, OK. So it's being offered to you by kind of a robot behind the scenes. Right. And if you look carefully, you'll see the little envelope next to these. This means this is actually sent to me in an email. Uh, these others that have a pencil, this is a document that's on my SharePoint, or it could be in my Office 365 groups or Microsoft Teams, which also use SharePoint. And I click on this, and it'll take me to the document, and I can edit it directly close that for a moment. But if I open one of these other ones, because it's coming from an email, if I click on this, what it's actually going to do is open the email. And you can see this was actually an attachment to an email that was sent to me uh, just uh, yesterday. We'll close that one as well. Now below these recommended documents, and by the way, there are more. I can kind of scroll through if I want to see more of the ones that are here. And these aren't all from me. You can see in this case, it's a document that was edited by Jackie Flynn. Because I do a lot of work with Jackie, the AI is thinking maybe this is a document that I might be interested in. And so it's in this recommended section. But if I scroll down here to this next section, I've got four tabs, Recent, Pinned, Shared With Me, and Discover. Recent, these are going to be documents that I accessed recently. So the most recent Word, PowerPoint, Excel, and OneNote notebooks that I've accessed either from the web versions or also from uh, the desktop versions. For example, I may have opened this document from within Microsoft Teams or from within Word itself on my desktop. So pinned documents are ones that I want to come back to over and over again, so I've pinned them to be here. And the way I do that, if I go back to my recent tab, let's say that this uh, high bin document was one that I wanted to come back to over and over again. I can right click on this document, choose Add to Pinned, and now when I go to my pinned menu, there's the high bin document. So for those common documents that you want to come back to time and time again, pinning is helpful for that. If I decide this doesn't need to be pinned anymore, of course I can right click and choose remove from pinned. And it's gone. Shared with me, like the name implies, these are files that have been shared with me by somebody else, either inside my organization or outside my organization. It might be something that was sent to me in an email, it might be something that was sent to me through Microsoft Teams, uh, or through SharePoint, or through Office 365 groups. But these are all documents created by somebody else that was then uh, emailed or otherwise sent to me. And then Discover is very similar to the recommended at the top. It's the same AI, the Microsoft Delve, is looking at all the documents in my organization and recommending ones that, uh, in this case, are not ones that I've worked on directly, but have been worked on by other people in the organization and based on my relationship with them, uh, it thinks that I may be interested in this document. So here's one from Jackie Flynn, one from Kevin Brown, one from Jim Loftus, and so on. Also in this same section, I have the ability to upload a document. So if I have something on my local machine that's a Word document or really any kind of document, uh, I could upload it from here. So maybe I want to upload this backgrounds file. I can choose that. And by default, these are all uploaded to my personal OneDrive for Business account. So again, these are not shared with anybody else. These are only accessible to me unless I choose to share them with somebody else. But it does mean that I can get to it from any of my devices that have OneDrive for Business. So after the file finishes uploading, it goes ahead and opens the document. It assumes that's what I wanted to do. In this case, that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to go back to my home screen. So let's go back down to where we were in the document section. And now notice that I have a new recent document with the little three-line shiny icon on it, letting me know that this is a brand new document, and it's the one that I used most recently. I also have this icon over here on the far right where I can just change the way I'm looking at the documents. Right now, I'm looking at them as tiles. It's my personal favorite. Sometimes I want to see them as a list, though. It's the same documents, just in more of a list format. Sometimes this is a little bit easier. With all of these documents, again, I can right-click to get to a menu. Well, there's also a three-dot menu over here at the far right. Uh, it does the same thing. Sometimes if you're on a tablet that uh, may be harder to right-click uh, with your touch screen, then you can use the three-dot menu. It's a little bit easier. Now, I can also drag a file to this section to upload it. And I can also pop over to my OneDrive to see all of my documents over in OneDrive. And that takes us to locations. 
down here in the bottom section of our home screen, these are our locations. And what it's showing us are the most recent folders that we've accessed in our OneDrive, which for me is our Documents folder, which I just now accessed because I uploaded that file to it. It's also showing me the most recent SharePoint sites I've been to. And in many cases, this is going to be actually related to Microsoft Teams or Office 365 groups, because when they store files, they're actually storing them in a SharePoint site uh, with the same name as the team. So I'll see those here. If I want to go straight to the site, I could click on the link here. This is going to take me directly to the SharePoint site. We'll talk about that a lot more in the SharePoint modules. We'll close that for now. Or if I just want to go to the SharePoint app, down at the bottom I have a go to SharePoint option or a go to OneDrive option to go to the OneDrive app. Down at the very bottom of the home screen and some other screens in Office 365, we'll see these two buttons, Feedback and Need Help. Feedback is one where we can just send feedback to Microsoft about something we like, we don't like, or a suggestion we may have. This help section, we're going to look at in more detail in our help lesson. And you also may notice there's also a question mark up here in the top navigation bar, uh, which is different from the help down here below. We'll talk about the differences when we talk about help, but I want to talk more about this top navigation bar. So let's take a closer look at that whole top navigation bar in our next module.